All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is chapter seven, uh, where we are talking about scatter plots, association, and correlation. Uh, and so, in this video, we are going to introduce uh, what a scatter plot is and how to describe a scatter plot. Okay, so uh, a scatter plot. Oops, uh, a scatter plot is most likely the the most common effective display uh, for data. Uh, it looks at two quantitative variables um, and it is excellent for seeing patterns trends and uh, relationships uh, we are looking at them to observe a relationship between two quantitative variables um, and you've probably seen scatter plots before uh, they uh, you, you learn what a scatter plot is you know, very, very young, you know, any kind of uh, Cartesian plane with uh, two different quantitative variables that have some kind of association. And, you know, it's it's a bunch of points on a graph, okay? It's a scatter plot. Uh, the plot is scattered, right? Uh, so we're looking at, uh, the, the purpose is to look for associations between these variables, trends, okay? Um, when we are looking at these trends, uh, we do have some specific language that we want to uh, convey when we are describing them. And we want to look at these four features. We, we look at the direction, the form, the strength, uh, and any unusual features, uh, or FUDs, if you want to try and have a nice acronym to remember it, right? FUDs, uh, form, unusual features, direction, and strength to help us uh, remember that. So let's talk about each of these uh, individual things and uh, how we might describe them. So uh, direction, uh, we describe in one of two ways. Uh, it's either negative or positive. Uh, when something runs from the upper left to the lower right, we call that a negative direction, right? Uh, that would mean that uh, it kind of goes like this, right? It's going upper left to lower right. Uh, we call that a negative direction. Whereas if it's going uh, the other way, we call that positive, meaning if it's going bottom left to upper right, that's positive. Kind of the same way you think about the slope of a line, okay? Uh, so for example, here we have a scatter plot that is the uh, prediction error for uh, how far hurricanes um, will land ashore uh, given by its year. And uh, you can see that this figure shows a negative direction between the year uh, since 1970 uh, and the prediction errors. Um, so as the years have passed, this means that the prediction errors have gotten better, right? The error has gone down because we have this clearly negative um, direction on the scatter plot, okay? So uh, we would describe this one, the direction, as being negative. Uh, here, again, we also have a negative association between central pressure and max wind speed. Uh, as the central pressure increases, the maximum wind speed decreases. There is a negative association between them. Form uh, is uh, how the, the, the overall sort of shape of the relationship. Um, so here, if we look at that max wind speed and central pressure again, uh, we have a fairly straight-ish line going down. Um, we've definitely got a little bit of uh, stuff over here, but this is fairly straight. So we would call this a linear relationship. So anything that comes up to be uh, in a fairly straight line, a swarm of points stretched in a straight line, uh, we call that a linear relationship. Um, you'll find that actually most of these follow uh, our math functions that we've uh, maybe learned in our algebra classes. Um, this would be a curved relationship. You can kind of see the curved nature of it right there. Uh, you might say that this has an exponential relationship uh, or a, an exponential form. <clears throat> Uh, here we have something that's a very fairly parabolic shape. You can kind of see this curve showing up right there. Um, and so we would see that as a parabolic shape. Uh, parabolic shapes, by the way, we don't have methods for in this particular course. Uh, these curved ones we do, we can actually straighten those out. 
um, but when things are parabolic, we can't <clears throat> we can't really do much with it. Um, at least again, and not until you learn uh, a little bit more statistics there. So these are our forms, right? They kind of take the shape of the the functions that we've learned in our algebra classes, and so we want to state that type of relationship. Strength talks about how bunched together the relationship is, right? Uh, so here we have a fairly strong grouping of points. Notice that they are not scattered. Um, they are fairly linear, positive, and uh, they're tightly compacted. So we would call this a strong relationship. Uh, whereas this is an example of a very weak relationship. Notice that is uh, a, a, a a big scatter of points, right? Kind of looks like somebody sneezed on a piece of paper and it just spit kind of went everywhere, right? Uh, it is scattered, the strength is weak, there's no discernible trend or pattern, um, it's a weak relationship, okay? So when points are highly compacted, we call that strong. When it's uh, weak like this, when they're very scattered, we call that weak. Uh, there is, of course, in the middle where it's fairly strong or medium strong, and you kind of have to um, gauge. There's some, you know, wiggle wiggle room in the language that we use to describe it. Okay, uh, and we do actually have a number that helps us quantify what scatter is, um, and we will talk about that in the next video. All right. Uh, finally, unusual features. We're looking for unexpected things in relate in the uh, in the scatter plot, right? Um, a lot of times, these unexpected features can tell us really interesting stories about the data. Uh, for example, if we were looking back at that hurricane data, and there was one that was uh, far away from the trend, uh, it could be that that was a particularly difficult to predict hurricane that they got really wrong, or maybe they did it really well and it was really and it was far away from the trend data. So uh, those ones can tell us interesting stories. Uh, we also want to look for things like um, subgroups. Uh, like clusters of groups. So if you have a, a scatter plot that <clears throat> maybe has like a bunch of points up here and like a bunch of points down here, but like a big old gap in the middle or uh, cluster, you know, clusters of these things, that's something that we want to address because that's a fairly interesting aspect of the scatter plot. Why is there a big gap in the data? Uh, that, that can tell us something really important about the relationship. Uh, so we want to make note of those things as well. Um, we do especially want to make note of outliers um, just because outliers have a tendency to mess with some of the quantitative measurements that we are going to take a little bit later. So outliers can ruin those things so we do have to be very careful uh, about addressing those. Okay. Uh, so let's, let's do a couple of uh, examples of just how to write um, a good description and again we want to make sure that we use FUDs, right? Form, unusual features, direction, and strength. Um, uh, as for the AP exam specifically, uh, those uh, the test readers, the test graders are looking specifically for those aspects. And if you don't have them, um, you you do get marked down. Okay. Uh, so here we have a scatter plot of wife's age versus husband's age, right? And so just analyzing this, we can see that uh, as the husband's age increases, uh, the wife's age increases as well. Husband and wives have a tendency to be fairly close in age, right? Um, so what we might say over here is, uh, making sure to state it in context, is uh, the association, oops, association, between the husband's age and wife's age uh, is, and then uh, we wanna hear, here's where we talk about form, direction, strength, and any unusual features. So we're gonna say uh, is positive because that's talking about direction, uh, linear, because we definitely have a linear line here, um, and fairly strong, because these are pretty compacted together, right? Maybe there's a little bit of looseness up here in the 60s for some reason, uh, but nothing really that we need to really be concerned about, okay? Um, 
And then we would say there are no obvious outliers. Or interesting <clears throat> uh, patterns. And uh, that addresses everything, right? We've got form, direction, strength. Notice that uh, the form, direction, strength, we really kind of address with one word. Um, if you remember doing our normal models, we typically have to use um, a complete sentence to describe uh, shape, center, and spread uh, with numbers. Um, but we don't always have those things for form and direction. Uh, we will, we will, like I said, we'll have one for strength a little bit later. But um, we can get away with uh, getting all that information in, in a fairly, uh, you know, short number of words. Okay, uh, let's do a couple of others here. So here again, now we've got a, a scatter plot between height and weight, um, and so this one looks significantly more spread out but there is kind of an increasing trend. Uh, this definitely not curved, uh, but you, you can see something relatively linear here, right? As it, um, we have a definite, like we're starting low and we're uh, getting higher, right? So we, again, uh, writing this out, we would say the association, can't do O's, association between height and weight. is um, positive because it's definitely going up <clears throat> uh, linear uh, and fairly weak because this is not a super strong relationship right these these points are really spread out it is fairly weak um, I don't see that there's probably not any obvious outliers um, you might have some these ones up here maybe a little bit uh, away depending on where our line is and, and by the way how do we determine something is an outlier we're gonna talk about that in a, in future videos um, but for now it's just anything that's far away from the trend uh, so uh, there's there's no obvious outliers uh, or interesting patterns no subgroups no clusters or anything like that all right uh, I think I got one more here so uh, again let's we've got uh, maybe I've got two more I've got two more sorry uh, so here we've got uh, the driver age versus the sign legibility distance. So looking at signs while you're driving, um, you can see that this one has a negative association as the driver age increases, the sign distance that they can read decreases, right? Their, their eyesight gets poorer as you get older. Um, so you might say the association between driver age and <clears throat> sign legibility distance is negative, oops, I didn't write is, I wrote a comma, is negative. Um, it's fairly linear still. Uh, and uh, this is, again, again, it's fairly weak, right? And fairly weak. Really no obvious outliers, no obvious outliers, um, or subgroups, or clusters. And that addresses everything in our funds. Last one, here we've got a grip strength. Um, this is the uh, a person's arm strength, their like uh, bicep tricep versus their grip, just the grip of their hand. Um, and we again, we've got a definite positive relationship. But on this one, we do have uh, again, it's fairly weak. But notice how there's kind of a big cluster in the middle with some things out here. Um, so this one, we might say that the association between 
arm strength and grip strength. is um, it's positive, linear, uh, and weak. Uh, there are no obvious outliers, but uh, there is a clustering of data in the center, which implies that um, the, the majority uh, of people tend to have a, sort of an average grip and arm strength here, whereas you have a couple of people down here who fit the trend but do not have much arm strength or grip, and a couple of people over here who have very high arm strength and very high grip, uh, but uh, so they fit the trend data but they definitely do not, um, they're not of sort of the average, right? You kind of get a sense for an average grip strength being right here in the center, okay? All right, and that's everything about uh, describing scatter plots. Uh, next, in the uh, next video, we're gonna talk about correlation and uh, the roles that the variables play. Uh, so uh, we'll see you there. Uh, if you've got any questions about what's going on in this video, please make sure you leave a comment and I'll uh, do my best to answer. Uh, thank you very much for watching and have a great day, bye.